everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to a rare plant index. I know it has been quite honestly an insane amount of time. I'm not sure when my last rare plant index was. Was it, was it Hoya? Which was like a year ago? Maybe, maybe a bit more. It's a little bit crazy, I know, but we're here now. And I've, I'm a little bit delayed in filming this actually for many reasons, but the reason I'm delayed today is because my phone won't load the photographs that I need to look at today. So unfortunately, I have a laptop that I'm using. Today's episode is all about the beloved Syngonium. I own a few of these myself. I'm a huge fan for reasons I'll probably tell you about as we go through the whole thing. I have made this Syngonium Red Planet X a little bit smaller. So usually my rare plant indexes range from, say, anywhere between 25 plants to maybe like 45. This one, I think, is around about 30 plants. So it's a little bit on the smaller side. But honestly, I thought maybe six months in the future, if we find some new and interesting Syngordium varieties, that we can kind of do this again. Because I did this before on my Philodendron rare plant index because it was so outdated. I then made a Philodendron 2. If you don't see some Syngordium in this one, then it could probably go into the next one. So try not to worry too much. If you happen to be new here and you don't know what a rare plant index is, it is a series I run here on YouTube where I take a certain type of plant and I create a list of basically how rare these plants are. And when I say rare in this sense, I do kind of mean it in a commercial sense. So how easy they are to purchase. I'm not talking about numbers in the wild or anything like that. In these videos, I rank these plants between uncommon, rare, very rare, extremely rare, and if applicable, because it isn't always a holy category. So what I usually do in these videos is I show you a couple of common varieties of a given plant first so you can kind of familiarize yourself with the plant. It might turn out that you do actually know the type of plant that it is because sometimes people watch these things having no idea e.g. what an alocasia is or something like that. So I'm going to show you a couple of common ones starting off with like the most common one that I could even think of and that is the Syngonium podophyllum. You can get this nearly anywhere. I want to say that, of course, it might not be true for where you are. I say this all the time. These things are super subjective depending on where you are in the world and who's selling what and everything else. But generally speaking, Syngonium podophyllum or podophyllum, as a lot of people say, it's pretty common. So the image I'm looking at here, the Syngonium is reasonably sagittate, so it's arrow shaped. And it has some kind of frosting and some white veining, but it's not, it's nothing flash in my opinion. It's just pretty, pretty chill. They're very easy to look after as are most Syngonium, at least most of the ones that I've had or taken care of. And I will be showing you some today, by the way. It's a nice one. I, I don't really have anything to say about it because I think, and you will be aware as we go through this list, there are so many amazing varieties. I think sometimes varieties like this get left behind, which is kind of sad, but it's how it is, right? So the next common Syngonium I have for you is one that a lot of people tend to like. This is the Syngonium podophyllum pink illusion, also known as neon robusta. This one's quite nice. How can I describe it? It's like a blush pink all over. Of course, you can see an image next to me now. It's a blush pink all over. In my experience, this is super easy to get. This is really, really common. And it's quite nice, to be honest, to be able to find like a common syngonium that has a little bit of pink in it. Because typically in the plant world, depending on what it is in the aroid world, you can pay a little bit of money for your pink. So it's not the only pink syngonium in this list, but it is quite a nice one if you're just looking for an all over like blush of color. And of course, it's very easy to get your hands on in most places. So for that, it's really, really nice. The last common Syngonium I want to touch on is the Syngonium podophyllum. I'm probably going to drop the podophyllum bit off the end because it's going to be really annoying. But this is the Syngonium pixie, as it's known. It's cute. I think it's, I'm guessing it stays pretty dwarf. I don't know. I haven't owned this. I don't think I've even seen this one in person, but I know that it's supposed to be quite small. Whether it stays small or not, I'm not really sure. This one's quite nice though. It has a white kind of wash down the center of the leaf and it reminds me a little bit of ivy. And I think for that reason, I actually don't scream for this. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Maybe it could be the image that I'm looking at because I often look at different images from the ones that you end up seeing for various reasons. So let let me know. I think it reminds me a little bit of ivy and in the houseplant world, I don't know if ivy just gets a bad rep or it's generally terrible, but it's a pest magnet and a lot of people tend to stay away from it. So for that reason, I don't love it. Out of the common section, I would probably go for the neon robusta, the pink one. So kicking things off with uncommon. This is usually where the rare plant index starts now that we're familiarized with what syngoniums there are or the ones you may or may not have seen in shops. So starting off uncommon, we have the syngonium white 
butterfly. This is nice and let me tell you it is different from the regular Potophyllum. This one has a lot more contrasting on the veins. It's a little bit more, I don't want to use the word frosted because I'm probably going to use the word frosted a lot. This Syngonium does remind me of a one further down this list that I would rather have. And when we get to it, I will tell you what I meant. It's pretty accessible, but I'm just craving another one further down. You, if you're into your Syngonium, you might know which one I'm talking about. I'm guessing it's pretty popular. I don't know. But I would prefer a different one to this one. But there it is. There's a Syngonium white butterfly. And next we have, and I have seen this one in person, and I'll be honest, I didn't get the hype. I really didn't. This is the Syngonium macrophyllum frosted heart as it is known. It could be in the common category for some people but for the most part I see it as uncommon rather than common. The leaves on this one aren't arrow shaped they're more heart shaped so in that sense for me it, it kind of reminds me of like a, a philodendron like a vining philodendron. For that reason you probably know what's coming I think I prefer a philodendron over this just because I know what I want from my syngonium and again that's going to become very clear as we go through this but for me it's nice the Frosting just, I mean, this is probably the image I'm looking at, but the frosting looks a bit, bit off. It doesn't quite look right. The plant almost looks like it needs fed. Maybe that's just my photograph. Even though it is different, even though it reminds me of other plants that I like, I probably wouldn't add this to my collection. Let me know if you agree or disagree though, because obviously everybody has different tastes and that's what makes it fun. Every time I have to scroll down an image on this laptop because I have this in a Word document, I have to literally do that. <laughs> in order to get the next plant. It's a little bit irritating. Next on the list is the Syngonium Tri-Leaf Wonder. I have seen this in person and I really don't get it. Just going to be honest, it's probably a bit of an unpopular opinion actually, but I just feel a little bit meh about these. Again, there are some philodendron that are similar. Um, Tripartitum comes to mind very quickly. There are some other ones as well, but I can't remember the names of them because they're less collected usually. And that's kind of a sign for me. If I find that a lot of philodendron that look similar aren't really collected, I can only assume that that's the same thing for this one. Again, it's in uncommon, so a lot more people might have it, but I don't think it's desirable. That's kind of what I'm getting at. Again, it's down to personal taste. Again, I could be wrong, but I don't really see people after it at all. I don't even see people selling it. It's just, it's not really a thing. I kind of find them a little bit boring. Next on the list, we have, and this goes by two names, and whenever a, a Syngonium goes by more than one name, if I've found out that name as of planning this video, then I will tell you what it is, because a lot of these Syngoniums have multiple names, but I'll tell you as we go. The next Syngonium on the list for Uncommon is the Syngonium Panda or Syngonium Green Spot. So that's the two names it goes by. This one is nice. It's very subtle though. But honestly, I would probably choose it out of all of the Syngonium that have come so far in our list, I think. You know, I sound like such a hypocrite because I'm saying other things are boring because they're mainly green. And then here it is nearly green and I don't find it that boring. Maybe it's because the, the patterns on the leaves can vary a little bit more. Maybe that's what it is for me. I don't know. The majority of the leaf is kind of dark green and it's covered in like these light green kind of flecks. I would call them flecks of color. It's interesting and I'm guessing that's why it's called green spot or Syngonium panda. It doesn't have enough pizzazz for me but I do like it so this is definitely the, one of the ones that I would maybe pick up if I saw it. I don't know, I'm not crazy about it but it is quite nice. Again, there's another plant further down this list that I would prefer over this one. Are we surprised? Are we surprised? Honestly, are we surprised? So with that, I'm going to move on. My giant swipe. Okay, this one. This one I'd actually like. Oh, it's a long story, actually. I bought some of these in for the shop about a month ago. And they actually got phytoed to send over everything done properly, just as I always have done with one of my suppliers. And I got them to the other end and they got inspected over here in Britain and they got found to have some kind of pest on them and they all got destroyed. So I should have had one of these, but I don't. But I will get one later down the line. So I'm kind of predicting the future here a little bit because I really like these. And I want to see if you do as well. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to show you the plant. This is Syngonium Batic or Batic, also known as Syngonium Golden Venation. Again, I'm probably butchering names. I really like this one. When I said earlier that there was a Syngonium that I preferred to the white butterfly, this was the one I was talking about. It may or may not grow larger, but it's just more contrasted. The veins are much more white and the green parts of the leaf are much more green. It's more defined. I kind of like it. Now I get this probably isn't for everyone because not everyone likes this really 
really contrasty kind of thing. And I totally get that. But for me, I kind of like it. It's uncommon, but I think in some places this might be, I don't want to say rare, but I don't want to say uncommon. I feel like there should be an in-between. And in a lot of cases on this list, there are plants where I feel that way. I put this one in uncommon because as far as I'm concerned, I can't really find it, but it's not impossible. You can probably find someone that's got it. Again, if I, if I see this, I will get it. And I have seen it and I tried to get it. So I'll let you know how that goes. If you watch my channel, you may see it in a haul in the future. I thought I would have had it by this episode, but obviously I have not. All right. Scrolling down. <laughs> Next one I have on my list for uncommon. And I've actually moved this down a category because this has definitely become more of a thing recently over the last six months, in my opinion. This is the Syngonium erythophyllum or erythophyllum slash red arrow. So it's either called Syngonium erythophyllum or Syngonium red arrow. We're going to call it the red arrow because my Invisalign cannot handle that. It cannot handle that. So this is a really cool Syngonium. I'm looking at an image now that you may or may not be viewing. Um, it's actually trailing and it's not quite arrow shaped. It's more kind of ace of spade shape than an arrow, at least according to the, the image I'm looking at. And the foliage is like super, super, super dark green. And the underside of the leaf is this amazing burgundy red color. For that reason, I think it's quite sexy. And I like this one because yes, it's a Syngonium, but it's just hit and different, right? Than a lot of the other Syngonium that people show off and people have. For that reason, I quite like it. And I get why you would trail it rather than grow it up something Thing. because if you trail it you're gonna see these burgundy undersides a lot more than if you grow upwards so i actually kind of like the decision to grow syngonium trailing for this specific plant i don't know how people like to grow theirs i think i like to keep mine and i will show you them again as they appear as like a little bush and just trim it off and just keep it quite neat some people like to do that some people like to grow them upwards but i feel like not a lot of people trail them but i think if you were going to this is a good one for that because of those undersides of the leaves let me know what you think of this for me, this looks quite a lot like an anthurium. I would have it, but I'm not crazy for it. I think I used to want this a lot more than I do now because I've known about this plant for some time. Moving on, swipe, swipe, there we go. Next plant on my list for uncommon is the Syngonium holly. This is quite similar to another one down below and I think I've kind of worked out the difference. This one's a little bit more on the pointy side. So you have your beautiful arrow-shaped leaves and they are pointy. They're very frosty though and I really have developed a bit of a thing for Syngonium. They're a little bit more on the frosty side. I kind of like it. I find it a bit hot. This one is nice if you want an affordable Syngonium to put among darker foliage. So in the same way that the Batic, the Batic, the golden golden Ven venusian venetian similar to that this one is quite nice for just raising some color up in there without having to get all crazy with variegation it's a nice one for that again this is one of a few frosted plants on this list but this is one of the more affordable ones i would not say no to this one it's quite nice i think i prefer one further down the list but i'm gonna say that a lot new drinking game take a shot every time i say that i prefer something further down the list because you know it's gonna happen next plant and the last plant actually on my list for uncommon is the syngonium confetti now then i like this i think a lot of people will too and the fact that it's uncommon really really helps its appeal actually because it's pink variegation on a little bit more of a budget and i'm a big fan of that so from the images i see of this plant this plant is quite lime green in color it's not a dark green syngonium it's not frosted it's a light kind of limey green and there are patches of variegation but the patches are i mean it's like confetti right that's why they call it confetti it's almost like an aerosol spray but not quite like drops of, of water or like you've splashed it with like i don't know like a brush with paint on it and you flicked it at the plant that's kind of what it looks like the image i'm looking at it does have a little bit of sectoral on the leaf as well but i'm guessing that's not really that common if you're going to get this plant you're getting it because of the splashed effect across the leaf and i quite like it i do i'm not keen on the lime green aspect but I think that's just me generally. I don't know if it's because I work with so many plants every day and the majority of plants I keep, if they're looking lime green, they're probably, there's something wrong. Do you know what I mean? They're not looking their best. So whenever I see lime green on a plant, I'm almost trained to think that it's maybe not well, like it needs a feed. So for that reason, I wouldn't. I would rather get a different one. I know, take a shot. But it is a nice plant. I get the appeal 100%. I'm just a little bit put off by the lime. But I have a fix for that. I'm overexposed as hell. I'm overexposed. Give me two minutes. I'm going to have to fix this. One minute. The sun's come out. How rude. How rude is that? Right. 
So, where were we? Next category is rare. And this one, no prizes for guessing. I prefer this plant over the last plant because this is kind of a variation on the last plant, providing what I'm saying is true. So I did some research on this plant and I will put the picture up now so we can stare at it while I run my mouth, basically. This is the Syngonium Milk Confetti. I am 99% sure that this is different to the confetti. I don't know how different it is. I don't know the reasons for the difference in terms of genetic reasons, like biological reasons. I don't know if it's environmental or what. It seems to be different from the images that I see. This one, I would prefer, assuming, you know, both of these plants exist and they're both different, I would prefer this one. That is because it's frosty. <laughs> it's because the thing that I didn't like about the previous plant, let me just scroll all the way up, it's lime green, right? This new plant, this Syngonium milk confetti, takes away that lime green aspect. The green that I can see is a very frosted, I hesitate to use the word mint, but it's quite a minty green. And I think the pink complements it a lot more. It's really, really pretty, this one. If I had a Syngonium wish list, I would add it to it. I don't think I would add it to my main wish list because there is a Syngonium on my main wish list that I have not yet acquired. But I really like it. And if I saw it at a good price, I'd pick this one up. I'm quite taken by it. I think, you know, I just think I prefer colder tones with plants. Like, you know, I like my Cebu blues. I like my blue Amedrium, stuff like that. I don't like oranges and yellows and, and hot colors as much as I like my blue tones. So same with variegation a little bit, although I do like a lot of yellow variegated things and there will be a video next week coming up about that but I like cold colors quite a bit sorry if you can hear a lot of noise I think the unit next to mine is doing some stuff and it's very noisy hopefully my noise cancelling will get rid of it so that is the Syngonium Milk Confetti let me know how you feel about it. Personally, I'm feeling it. I'm picking up what it's putting down. I'm quite liking it. It's nice. It's affordable pink variegation. I'm all about it. Right next on the list in rare is the Syngonium Wendlandii. Wendlandii. I believe that's how you pronounce it. This is quite nice. And I, I honestly, I'm going to say something and, and Syngonium lovers are going to know what I'm talking about. I hope I've given you the right image because there is another Syngonium further down this list that I could have accidentally mixed up the images with. So this is Syngonium Wendlandii. It's hard to say with this damn tray in my mouth. It has longish dark green kind of leaves. It's velvety to the touch, which is great. And it's got this really nice silver. It's not veining, although it is, it's like a, it's just kind of like a stripe, like a messy stripe up the middle. However, I hear that when this plant matures, it loses that silverness. I'm assuming it still keeps the velvetiness. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. I think it does. But you lose this beautiful stripe when it matures. An easy way around that, in my opinion, as someone that sells plants, would be to keep cuttings of this plant and swap out your mother with the cuttings. I guess that would be a good way to do it. I'm assuming that, you know, when you cut it, it will revert to juvenile. It might it might not. If that is the case, what you could do is you could keep taking cuttings from this and keep holding on to the juvenile cuttings that have the silver on. And then when they get older, you could sell them on or you could do something else with them that way. Or it could be a new mother. Or of course, you could just enjoy the plant maturing and, and be really satisfied in the fact that you have brought it to maturity. But there's an option if you really want to, you know, preserve the silver on this, that might be a good way to go. It's nice. I think I'd pick it up. Even though it loses the silver, I think I'd pick this one up. Even though, yes, there is a more rare one further down the list, I'd still pick this one up. And I'm interested to collect both. I will talk about it later when we get to the other one. But that is the Syngonium Wendlandii. It's very nice. Okay, the next plant I can actually show you. Where is it? I cannot see it. Where is it on my little table? There it is at the back. Okay, so my specimen that I'm going to show you doesn't look as good as possibly the one I found on the internet. I haven't found it yet. I don't know. Um, this is, this goes by two names. The next plant plant is Syngonium Three Kings, also known as Syngonium Magic Marble. I know I'm getting overexposed again. I can see it. I'm sorry. The sun is really playing havoc today. So Syngonium Three Kings or Syngonium Magic Marble. I don't know how to describe this, to be honest. I know that I like them. I think it's a good way of getting a little bit of variegation on a bit of a budget because these ones do tend to be a little bit more on the cheaper side because I think they've been tissue cultured. I don't know, but they're quite affordable. I will get mine to show you and I will describe it. Let me just put my little laptop down. This is actually a plant pot full of a few of them and it, it's been neglected actually. It's grown a little bit leggy. I've moved it under my grow lights now. It wasn't beforehand. It was kind of in a dark corner. So this isn't a great looking specimen arguably. But I guess the bit I want to draw your attention to is this shape here. If I can hold it up, hopefully it will like me. 
it's got a really unique pattern to it. And I will show you an image as well now with me talking. I will just keep the plant in front of me and I'll show you the image as well. They are quite green. And by the, I mean, this is living proof they can revert right here if you did wonder. I'll tip that up a little bit. I have lacquer in. This is all Syngonium Three Kings or Magic Marble in here. And some of them have definitely reverted. Obviously, I wasn't around to see this, so it's reverted. Not really on my watch. Obviously, I can cut it back and try again. I would have said to you, oh, maybe they're stable, but they aren't. Nice little plant, nice little Syngonium. This is a terrible example. As I say, I didn't know I had these. I really didn't. But given what I know now about them reverting, I'm probably not going to recommend them, actually. Let me know what you think of these. This is a terrible example. Again, I will definitely, definitely leave you with an image of how they look because this is not doing them justice. This is a bit shit. I will find you the best image that I can so you can see kind of what they should be like. And no doubt if you have this plant at home, they look a lot better than that. So next plant on my list. I love this plant. I hated it at first, but then I loved it. I really kind of got into it. I'll not waste any time. This is the Syngonium Pink Splash or the Syngonium Red Spot. I believe those are the two names it goes under. I do have one to show you. Where is it? Okay, it's there. It's pretty heavy. Mine is recovering from shipping, but it's recovering like really well. I have some older leaves on it. They're a little bit paler, but the new ones are coming in really beautiful. So I will show you that. Not everyone is going to love this plant, I feel like. And I say it because I feel like a lot of people are quite intoxicated by the idea of the pink princess, the philodendron pink princess. The pink on that is like Mattel Barbie pink. This pink is more of a baby pink and that's not for everybody. And normally it's actually not for me, but I like this plant quite a lot because the variegation on them can be very generous in my experience. Not like the previous plant we just discussed. It can just be a lot more forthcoming, I guess. So I'm going to try and balance it on my knee. You can kind of see some of the new foliage here that's come in dark. This is the new stuff that's grown with me. This stuff is from shipping, basically. It's perfectly fine. It's just, it's not going to green up. I have tried. It's just how it is. But it's a really, really pretty plant. Again, not the best show of how beautiful it is. Let me just for a second put it beside me so you can see. It is really beautiful though. And they grow really, really well. So if you're looking for one of these, I do actually recommend it if you're looking for some pink. I have no regrets about getting this. I think they're great. It's looking really good. I'm going to put it down because it's very heavy. But if you are looking for pink, I personally like those. I can tell you that they're quite easy growers and just fun to have, I think. They propagate well, but all Syngonium propagate pretty well. Let me know what you think. I happen to like them, but I get that some people want, might want something more pink than what they are. So the next plant on my list, where is it? It's over there, is the Syngonium Potophyllum White Variegated or Syngonium Albo. Most people call it Syngonium Variegata or Syngonium Albo. Let me pick it up. Mine is a little bit more on the pathetic side, but it's okay. This here is Syngonium Albo. If you haven't seen it, it's pretty straightforward. It's got arrow-shaped leaves and it has white variegation. They can revert. They're not stable. But what I will say is, in my opinion, maintaining the variegation on these is quite easy to do because of how quick quickly they grow and how quickly the props, you know, take. They don't really fail much. Like you shouldn't have too much problems. You can propagate these in water. You can do it in lecker. You can do it in a few different ways. If you're a beginner, I recommend water personally because you can see what's going on and you just have more access. But they propagate really well and they're really nice. Generally speaking, use these as a marker of what they look like because that's what they look like. Very, very brilliant white, like Monstera Albo white, like brilliant lily white. So if you're into your white variegation, these are quite nice. Now they're in the rare category, but I feel like they are going to come down because they're so easy to propagate and they are, I think they're starting to be mass produced if they haven't already been. They're beautiful, but they're, they're coming more available. So these are going to get easier to get 100% if they're not already as of me uploading this video. Really nice though. Do recommend. Very easy. The variegation can burn because these leaves are like paper thin. So watch out for your sectoral trunks, but they're really nice. And I do recommend them as well. Personally, I prefer the pink splash over that just because I see these all the time. Maybe, maybe they've lost their shine for me, but really, really nice one. Do recommend. So the next plant is either known as the Syngonium Mojito or the Syngonium Mottled. And it's not for everyone. I have one here. I will show you a photograph as well beside me. It's like, it's mottled. That's probably why it's called Syngonium Mottled half the time. I get that it's not for everyone. If I show you this leaf here, it can look to a lot of people like it's, it's unwell. Personally, I'm okay with it. I've made peace with it. I didn't know what to think of it when I first got it. This isn't 
my personal one, this is just a propagation from downstairs. I have tons of them. I didn't know what to think of it when I got it. And I do think this is Marmite as hell because a lot of people will look at it and go, okay, is it well? Is it viral? What is it? What's going on? Um, it can revert. I can tell you that, but this one has not. I get that not everyone will like this. I'll show you a picture so you get a more, you know, a good idea of what I'm talking about because the sun is coming out and I don't know how blown out I am right now. Anyway, next plan. And I think we're back to not showing you things for a little while, I think. So next plant on my list for rare is the Syngonium Moonlight or Moonshine. Disclaimer, I may have the wrong name. I see people referring to this as Syngonium Moonshine, but also I've seen it listed as Moonlight. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that they are the same plant. Love this one. I am looking for it. Yes, it's because it's frosted and I love it. And I think it would look gorgeous on the wall. I would love to add way more Syngonium to my living wall, actually. So we've got some arrow shaped leaves. We've got some beautiful mint color. This does seem different to the Syngonium Holly in the fact that the leaves on this one seem to be a lot more kind of wider and more paddly looking. And I think the Syngonium Holly was a little bit longer in shape and a little bit more arrow shaped. Also from the image I saw, the Syngonium Holly had a little bit of a darker leaf margin around the edge so that the, the edges of the leaf seem to be a little bit darker. This doesn't seem to be that present on this one. So for me, I prefer this one and that is the reasons why. It's a little bit wider, it's a bit cooler for me and it's a little bit more silvery looking, although that could be the image I'm looking at. Let me know what you think. Again, if you don't like your frosted stuff, you're not gonna like this, but I really like this and I would definitely, definitely, definitely appreciate finding one because I think it's really nice. Ooh, next one, not feeling at all. The next one on my list for rare is the Syngonium Chiapensi. I think that's how you pronounce it. It sounds a little bit like a Pokemon, not gonna lie. This one I don't like and I'll explain why I don't like it. So for me, this gives me juvenile Monstera vibes a lot. Could be the image I'm looking at. So sometimes if I say something and you don't feel like it translates to you, that's probably because I'm looking at an image that really represents what I'm saying and you get one that maybe doesn't. If there's any discrepancy in what I'm saying, that's why. But for me, the one I'm looking at now, it gives me juvenile Monstera vibes like real bad. If I saw it in a shop, I wouldn't think it was a Syngonium. For me, I know what I like from my Syngonium. I like my arrow shapes. I like my splashes and all of that. That's what I think of when I think of Syngonium. I don't think of this because it reminds me of a juvenile Monstera. I wouldn't bother. I don't see the point. I get it. Honestly, I get it. I get it. If you are a collector of Syngonium, yes, of course. Every plant on this list you're probably going to want. But for me, no. I'd rather curate a smaller collection of Syngonium and do the really funky ones. So for me, I'd probably skip out on this. Okay, next up. Last one in the rare category. And I had to check that this was the same name because the two names to me conflict each other a little bit. I'll try and explain what I mean. So this is the Syngonium Green Splash, also known as the Grey Ghost. Now this could be my preconceptions about things like Hoya Grey Ghost, Hoya Carnosa Grey Ghost, being that it's normally a bit more random but more expensive. It's weird. It seems to be really sought after and hard to get, but it also seems to be more affordable. I could have that wrong. That's the vibes I was picking up on. But either way, regardless of all that, because it doesn't matter, this is a really nice one and I would like to own it. Again, it's frosted, but it also has a little bit of the green, is it, was it the green spot or the, the, the panda syngonium, but like in reverse, that's kind of what this is. It's nice. It's got the bigger paddly leaves, which is nice. I don't have many of those. This one as well, at least on the image I'm looking at, the veining has kind of like a, a cool pink blush down it. And I think that's really nice as well. So I get why this one is sought after. It's quite funky. I would put it in the funky category. Again, not to be confused, with Green Spot. Green Splash, also known as Grey Ghost, is different from Green Spot. I know these names are really confusing. Maybe they're not for anyone else, but they are for me. I quite like it. I would have it. I'm not screaming. I'm not desperate. I'm not gagging for it. Nothing like that, but I would have it. I would have it. We're now jumping along to very rare, and this is where it gets quite sexy, I would say. I think that happens with every Red Planet Index I do, or at least in my opinion, they start to get sexy. This one, for me, is like entry-level sexy. I don't want to say it's Marmite, but a lot of people will look at it and go, ugh, no. No, just no. And I have a plant in front of me, but I might actually get a plant that I have just outside my door because I think it conveys it more than my plant. This is the Syngonium Potophyllum Yellow Variegated or Syngonium Aurea or something like that. Something that communicates yellow. I'm going to very quickly 
leave the room and I'm going to get, you'll still be able to hear me, but I'm going to get this other one here because it just displays my point a little bit more than mine because the, the variegation on mine looks a little bit more cream than yellow, which can happen, but this one definitely looks a lot more yellow. You're either going to love or hate this. Obviously, I will put an image on the screen as well. This I love. This is a beautiful specimen. I think I cut this a couple of repot with me ago as of releasing this video, but that's her. She's very, very pretty. Look at that. That's, oh my goodness, that's pretty. I'm going to have to photograph that. That's gorgeous. People don't dig yellow variegation. I do. I think I still prefer white, but it gets to a point where I see so much white variegates. It's nice to throw in a little bit of yellow just for some contrast. So for me, this is great. It behaves in exactly the same way that the Albo does, which is here like that. It behaves in the same way. I don't know. There's just something about these. I've got a really good selection of these. I have a lot with half moons. It's actually ridiculous. So I'm quite a big fan of them. I haven't seen them taking off, but I haven't really seen them sold much either. Maybe there isn't demand. I don't know. I really want to hear people's opinions on these. Tell me what you think. Personally, looking at this, I think it looks incredible. I really do. I don't get why someone would not want that. I think it's stunning. What? Again? Just my opinion. Next on the list for very rare is the Syngonium Rayi. Rayi. Ray R-A-Y-I-I. -I. So this is the Syngonium that looked very similar to the Syngonium Wendlandii. It is different. I'm going to be brutally honest with you. I did look this up, not extensively, but I looked it up and I couldn't find too many differences between the two plants. I can kind of see that they look different, but then again, it really depends on the photographs people have taken. And then you have to account for mis-IDs between the two as well. So the area here is a little bit muddy on this. I know that Syngonium AI is definitely more rare and I know that it tends to start smaller. I don't know if it ends up smaller when mature but it starts generally a lot smaller I think. It's nice. I just don't want to say too much about it looking at the image I'm looking at in case it's either a wrong ID or it's just this image. I think I'm going to go out on a limb and say it from what I know. Again, I might be wrong due to looking at a miss ID, but I believe that these plants also lose the stripe down the middle when they get mature. They definitely keep their velvetiness. I think, I don't think that goes, but I believe they lose the stripe. So let me know what you think. Let me know if I'm right or wrong. If you could clear it up, that's great. I've tried my best. I can't find find too much information so I don't want to put it out there if I haven't found much but it's very beautiful it looks very similar to the Wenlandii and it may or may not behave in the same way Right, next Syngonium on my list for very rare. I'm not confident in the color that it actually is. Like I know what color it is, but I don't know to what extent the strength of the color is. So I'll get on with it. This is Syngonium Ormnak. I can't pronounce it. Really sorry about that. This is a really, really red. Is it ruby? It's pinky red. The image I'm looking at is all over reddy, pinky, not fuchsia. It's, it's got more of an orangey undertone to it. I cannot decide describe pink. Have you noticed that? That that was bad. I butchered that. It's kind of pink, right? But it looks much more pink. What I can say is it looks much more pink than the Neon Robusta that we saw in the common category. So it's quite pinky in that sense. And I really want to include it because I don't really see anybody having it much or shouting about it. Again, maybe I'm biased. And it is very, very pink. And it was definitely one of the pinker ones that I found. So I wanted to put it in this list to make sure that we keep it... Keep it fresh, keep it funky. Keep all the different colors in. Let me know if the image I show you is accurate, for example, because I don't know if somebody sees the image I'm showing you now and thinks, oh yeah, I really want it. We could really save these people hours of their time if we knew whether that was accurate or not, if that makes sense. I don't want anybody getting catfished. It's really annoying. Money is wasted. Time is wasted. It's not fun. It's a lot of disappointment. I see on Google varying degrees of pinkiness, and that could either be because someone happened to use a filter on theirs, or they photoshopped it, or maybe there's a miss ID. Maybe the other ones I'm looking at aren't actually this plant. Take what you see with a grain of salt. I'm letting you know it, it varies a lot. So if you like the look of it, Google it, make a decision. Also check the comments. Maybe someone said something about it, but I'm putting it in because pink is pretty cute. It's big and paddly. It looks like it has really dark leaf margins on the image I'm looking at. Like the leaf margins look like really dark greeny kind of black. I wouldn't have it personally, but I wanted to add it in because it brought some vibrancy to the list. To contrast that a lot is a Syngonium that I'm not loving. I'm going to be honest, I'm just not. It's not really for me. This is Syngonium Steamarchii. Can't pronounce it, really sorry. This is all over green. And the special thing about this one is the shape of the leaves. They aren't 
your typical sagittate arrow shape. They're a little bit different for Syngonium. Now I've ever included it because obviously that's cool. It's variety, we like it, it's hot. But I don't like this one very much. I think it reminds me of, is it the Philodendron Mayoi? Is that the right one? It's a Philodendron that looks similar and it's kind of, I don't know, just it looks like that. I'm not, I, I cannot describe plants today. I really can't. But what I'm getting at is I don't like it. It reminds me of another Philodendron that I don't really like anyway. So for me, I wouldn't grab it. I appreciate highly collectible if you're into your Syngonium. Yeah, absolutely get it because it's different and that's cool and we like that. Perhaps if I saw it in person, I could change my mind. That happens a lot with me. I can end up liking the ones that a lot of people consider boring. It can happen. How many of you have it? Is it common where you are? Do people care? Do people not care? Are we feeling it? Are we loving it? Are we hating it? Let me know. I don't care. <laughs> this is, is my professional opinion. I don't, I don't really care, to be honest. I don't really care. But different shape, so we had to include it. Last plant in the very rare category. And this is like a mashup of two different plants for me. Um, I will get on to what I mean by that later. But this is the Syngonium Starlight. This to me looks an awful lot like the Syngonium Magic Marble or the Three Kings, but a little bit longer. It honestly, it looks practically the same. I think that's the only difference is the leaves are much more long in appearance. This one is much more rare to get your hands on. I'm not saying you can't. I'm saying it's very difficult. At least general consensus is it's quite difficult. I think I would like it if I saw it in person. I can see myself liking this one because honestly, I have had better specimens of the Magic Marble in and I've loved those. I thought they were great. So with that in mind, I can see myself really liking this. Plus, I like long boys. You know that if you watch my channel, it's a little bit of a long boy, therefore it probably takes the edge. So if I had to choose between the Starlight and the Magic Marble, regardless of rarity, it doesn't matter, I'd probably go for the Starlight because of that length though. You know, I'm kind of into it. It can probably revert the same ways, you know, the Magic Marble can. I don't know. I'm saying it. I don't actually know. But it's nice. And I would definitely pick it up if I saw it. Okay, we're into extremely rare. And let me count how many. There are not many in here. Are there three in here? And then we are unfortunately done. But this first plant in the extremely rare category is on the top of my wish list. Like, literally. This is hot. This is like, if you could buy one Syngonium that has it all, it's got it, it's funky, it's, you know, going to hold its value when you sell it. It propagates well. It looks hot. It's just cool as hell. This is the Syngonium Red Spot Tricolor. Basically, if a pink splash and a Syngonium Albo had a baby, you would be left with this. It's awesome. So this plant has a mixture interchanging of both pink variegation and white variegation within the same leaf. It's hot. Now, the only thing I will say here is it's possible that I mean, I'm not sure how this variegation works exactly, right? I don't know if it's pure node dependent because I know we tend to think that, you know, plants work that way, but a lot of the times they don't. And I've seen proof of that a lot throughout different types of plants. So I don't know how the variegation actually works from leaf to leaf. So this might be a case of if you see one, I would be inclined to try and find a good specimen to be on the safe side because these plants are more expensive. Definitely. The last time I checked in the current climate, they are well into treble digits. I'm not sure if they've reached mid trebles, but they're kind of, you know, low to, to mid trebles for this plant as I'm recording this video. With that in mind, if I were you and I were hunting for it, which I suspect a lot of people are at this point, certainly now you've seen it, but I would honestly say try and find a one with good genetics. I would not be going for a low variegate just in case this shit ain't that random. You feel me? I wouldn't want to take the risk on it. I'm looking for this as we speak. I'm looking for a really good specimen. I'm absolutely just chomping at the bit to have one. I love them. I think it's great and I totally get why it is really sought after because it kind of has everything. Now, don't get me wrong. If you don't like colorful shit, then you're not going to like that. Totally. I get that. Or if you don't care enough and you think, right, well, I've got an elbow. I have a pink splash. I don't care cool. I totally get that. That would allow me, I'm not saying I would do it, but it would allow me to essentially cut down my plant collection. Because if I had the elbow and I had the pink splash and I had this, if I wanted to expand a collection and be big into my Syngonium, I would keep all three. But if I was trying to whittle my collection down, I would arguably get rid of the splash and the elbow and keep this one because it's reminiscent of both. I'm desperate for that. And I think a lot of people could maybe put that over a lot of other Syngonium in their collections because it's so unique, because it's high value, because it looks funky and it's got it all. So I cannot see that not being universally liked. I'm just going to make a bold statement. I would actually be surprised if people didn't love that. Ooh, next on the list, we have Mr. Marmite herself. This plant, ooh, I can't, I can't. <laughs> 
<laughs> I can't. You probably know what it is already from that reaction. This is the Syngonium Strawberry Ice, right? This Syngonium, if you do not know, if you're not in the know, this Syngonium is hailed as being one of the Syngonium that you just gotta have if you're into your Syngonium. A lot of people love this plant. I have one here that is actually a reasonably good specimen. I would put it on the, the higher quality side compared to a lot of stuff you can get on the market nowadays. I just don't like it. I got it to see if I would like it. I do offer them in the shop, but I myself, I'm not feeling it. I'm really not. And I'm saying that looking at a high quality specimen, right? This is Syngonium Strawberry Ice. There is two in the pot. This here is a really good example of what it looks like when it's good. It's kind of like a frosted baby pink. It's moved into a darker pink and then different places on the plant. Although to be honest, it seems to have disappeared. The plant can look a lot more burgundy in tone in other areas. Sorry, it's focusing on moi and not the plant. That's a nice leaf. Don't get me wrong. I think that's sweet. I don't love it, but in terms of that compared to the rest of it, it's nice. These are highly coveted and I don't really get it. I don't. I thought, you know, I'll get this in. I'll see if I like it. Maybe I'll change my mind. And I did tell you that I'd keep you updated on my opinion. Nah, I just don't. I know it's extremely rare. I know it's hard to get. I know it's coveted, but it doesn't mean to say you've got to like it, right? And that's the great thing about these rare plant indexes. You don't have to like shit because it's rare. I am not about that. If I like something, I like it. If I don't, I don't. I tend to like the more rarer things. That's just the thing that I seem to suffer from. It's because I haven't seen them before, not because they are expensive or because you can't get them. It's, it's a different thing. So classic example, things can be very rare, but you don't have to like them. And honestly, the feedback I had on these were that most people didn't like them. I think, what, oh, did someone call them something really funny? I can't remember what they said in that video. Did they liken it to garbage or, oh, what was it? It was really funny. If you, if it was you that left that comment, leave it again, because somebody said something really funny about what they looked like. These are an acquired taste, but uh, let me know. Just let me know. As with everything, let me know. I don't love it. I have one here. Um, I'm growing it out. I'm going to keep growing it, but I don't really care about it. I'll be honest. I'm very sorry if you own that plant. It's not any shade to you personally. I just, I'm not a fan. I'm sure I own so many plants that people just think, why did you do that? That is gross. And you're right in your own right, you know? Not everyone has to like it. I'm sorry if my opinion offends you, but it's a bit ugly. So moving on. So the next plant is, I cannot pronounce this. I'm never going to be able to pronounce this. It's just a thing. This is the Syngonium, this one. I'm not even going to say it. I'm not even going to say it. I'm not even going to embarrass myself. But I do have one here. It's over there. I need to pick one up. I like this Syngonium. It's very different. It's not a fast grower in my experience anyway. Again, if you own this, you might have a different experience than me. It's very interesting though. It has these incredibly long lance leaves. See if I can hold it up to the camera. Again, it wants to focus on me all the damn time. Really weird leaves. It's just bizarre. I can't really give you any good descriptors. Now, this leaf shape can change. I do have a few more downstairs and a lot of the leaf shapes have become more arrow shaped. I know that the shape generally is a very long pointy arrow. It should stay that way in my experience. I do have some bigger than this. I probably should have grabbed one. I didn't, but they're really, really nice plants. Now they feel weird. These feel really quite rough. They're almost more leathery, which tells me that they're probably quite tough. And having had these for a while, I can tell you that they are pretty tough. They don't really die. You can put them in a black hole and I mean a black hole and they'll be okay. They're not going to die on you. Yeah, they don't grow very quickly. These are probably an acquired taste as well. I would love to see a nice big one. I would love to see one mature. Just a weird plan. Obviously, I will have included a photograph for you while I'm kind of mincing around with this thing. They're different. They're just so different to any other Syngonium that I've seen and that definitely are on this list. So for me, they're pretty awesome. I do like them. I stand by them. They're good. Not to everyone's taste, but I like it. It's good. The last plant I do not own. I have seen listings for it online, but it seems to pretty much always be sold out. I don't think I've really seen many photographs of it either. I'm not saying you can't get it. Syngonium generally seem to be more available than a lot of other things. They don't seem to be as in demand as a lot of other things. Like for example, when I do say a philodendron rare plant index, right? The stuff at the top of that is just insane. It's so rare, it's in the thousands. There's no Syngonium on this list that's in the thousands at all. These are all maybe maximum mid trebles. So in that sense, they're really good. But you take things like the philodendron rare plant index and you take things like the peperomia rare plant index I did. The values on those are like crazy off because pepper 
hyperomia generally are not in demand. They're not hyped in any way. People aren't screaming for them. The prices are very, very low. Even Hoya, now don't get me wrong, some of the Hoya are definitely up there. They're probably, to be honest, the Hoya is more matching in some of these Syngoniums. So although it is in extremely rare, they are more affordable than a lot of other Aroids. And for that reason, I love Syngonium, by the way, can you tell? I'm a bit of a fanboy of Syngonium. Anyway, sorry. This last plant on my list today is the Syngonium Wendlandii variegated, also known or more commonly referred to as the Syngonium scrambled eggs. Now then, I get why you would want this based on the fact that we know that Syngonium Wendlandii, the stripe fades. So I guess what you would be left with when this plant reaches maturity and it keeps its variegation, you'd be left with these really dark velvety leaves and yellow variegation. I get why that's quite hot. Personally, when they are juvenile, and I haven't seen a picture of a mature one, I'm just kind of making those assumptions now on camera. When I look at a picture of them juvenile, I'm looking at quite a nice picture now actually, I can't help but feel that the variegation, the way that it is displayed, Played, at least on the plant I'm looking at, I cannot help but feel it kind of ruins it a bit. I don't know. Now, don't get me wrong. This is probably one of these plants where I see it in person if I had the chance to pick it up. I would pick it up if I had the chance just purely to either sell it on or to see it for myself. I would pick it up. But I feel like the variegation kind of ruins it. That said, as I've said before, when it gets mature, I can see it being hot. So this is one that you buy and then you grow, you know, big and you get it to be really big and sexy. Let me know. Everyone's always talking about this one when I look in Syngonium groups and stuff like that. And people definitely say, you know, that's the rare one. That's at the top. For that reason, obviously, it is here on this list. But I'm, un I'm undecided. I'm honestly, I'm undecided as to what I think. I can't decide if the variegation ruins it. I don't know. I'm, I'm very classic with the plants I like. Like if it's not a funky color like the pink and, and stuff like that, nine times out of 10, I would prefer plants that are green, but they have something that's stable about them. Like they have, like the Gloriosum behind me is absolutely stunning, obviously. It's really big, by the way. You know, it's got beautiful white veins and it's dark. I prefer that to a lot of variegation. I just do. It's just what I prefer. But a lot of people probably prefer variegation. So maybe my bias is coming off there. So I don't know. Um, potentially for me, the variegation ruins it. I would pick it up. I got to see it for myself and then give you a more informed judgment. I might haul it in nine months or something and be like, hey, this is great. Fuck what I said, you know? We'll see. We'll see what happens. But and with that, that is it for this week's, this year's, right? Rare plant index. I know it has been a while. I would love to get back in the swing of it. These rare plant indexes take a lot to do. Trust me, by the time you get the research, the filming, the editing, everything else, it takes a long time. Without further ado, I would like to invite you once again to give me requests for rare plant indexes. Sometimes people request things that I've already done and I should have a playlist on my channel of rare plant indexes. I will leave the link for that playlist down below and I will recommend it on the end of this video as well because I've done some red plant indexes and I don't think people know I've done them. What have I done? We have done philodendron, calathea, we've done alocasia, we've done anthurium, we've done peperomia, we've done begonia, we've done hoya, We've done Monstera and we've done Syngonium. But anyway, there's a full playlist of them, so feel free to check those out. They are obviously subjective because I might say something is super common and then it goes super rare, or I say something super rare and now it's super common. It, they're obviously very subjective to the time in which they were brought out. So feel free to take a look at those if you haven't already. Leave some more suggestions of a Rare Planet X that you'd like to see me do. And let me know your opinions on any of them because obviously Syngonium, I think, are a little bit of an untapped gem in the Aroid world. I think they're coming into their own now, but they haven't previous, but I predict a little bit of a tiny, tiny boom with Syngonium. I think they're going to come into their own this year because they are more affordable, or at least they are right now. I think they might come into their own. Let me know what you think about all those things that I've just mentioned. I hope you enjoyed this Rare Plan Index. Yes, it's good to be back. You can expect a lot more of these this year, and I will see you next week. Bye.